I have not been to Minnesota in probably 20 years. Bring gas. I'm still in disbelief that somebody was able to step in the way of the Denver Nuggets and make them look human. For how badly the Lakers struggled in the first round, the T-Wolves made that feel like a lifetime ago. The two-way stat line of 30.2 points, 6 rebounds, 5.8 assists and 1.7 steals on a deadly 53% shooting from Anthony Edwards just altered the course of NBA history. On this play, it was a screen and roll with Conley and Gobert. And when Jokic and KCP both go to Conley, it left Rudy open in the middle of the floor. But once he fumbled the catch, MPJ tries to force the turnover. But once he leaves his feet, the play is over as Rudy makes the pass to Ant. And from there, Edwards could definitely shoot a three. Instead, he waits for Michael Porter Jr. to close the gap. And once he does, it's a quick up fake and blow by, putting Jamal Murray in a bad position, leading to a foul and one. This is not the only time he did this though, as in transition, he catches MPJ with a nasty fake, as this time Murray was not able to come over and maybe he didn't want to either. Even with the game on the line, Anthony Edwards is just as deadly. Here he waves off Cat and backs down KCP to the foul line and buries a fadeaway jumper to seal the game with 0.9 seconds on the shot clock. But this was not the only clutch play he made in the series. As only moments later with Denver making a late surge, he goes right past KCP and Gordon, forcing Jokic to move to cover the drive. However, he isn't moving fast enough, leaving a wide open layup to steal the victory in game one. But he wasn't just good on offense, but it was perhaps the defense that was even better. When Edwards was the primary defender on Jamal Murray, he shot 30% from the field, 30% from three, recorded five turnovers a game, and was only able to score 21 points a night. With Jamal Murray virtually being played out of the series, and Michael Porter Jr. not being able to hit water if he fell out of a boat, Nikola Jokic showed the league why he's undoubtedly the MVP. As he wasn't just carrying this Nuggets team, but he lifted them off the ground. After tying the series at two games apiece with two gutsy road wins, and then defending home court in game five, the Nuggets had a comfortable three games to two lead. But then Minnesota pulled off one of the greatest comebacks backs in playoff history. After beating Denver by what felt like a million points in Game 6, the Wolves would then win their third game in Denver after being down 20 points early in the third quarter of Game 7. Such a comeback wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the fourth quarter heroics from Nas Reed, who was subbed into the game after Carl Anthony Towns got into foul trouble. When Carl Anthony Towns picked up his fifth foul, I thought the game was going to be over as Jokic one-on-one with Gobert was not working. But the Timberwolves coaching staff made another excellent move, putting Reed on Jokic who managed to come up with multiple stops, including two blocks. But Nas Reed also impacted the game offensively, ending the night with 11 points on 57% shooting off the bench. The reason the Timberwolves were down so much in the first place was because of Anthony Edwards. Thanks to the role players, we will remember this performance as Edwards trusting his teammates. But similar to Game 7 of the 2010 Finals, where Kobe Bryant only shot 25% from the field, and it was Gasol and Artest that stepped up, we don't remember this in a bad way on Kobe's legacy. And I believe we're going to remember it as similar way for Anthony Edwards. Minnesota's defense just made the best offense in the NBA look like the worst. As in each game the Wolves won, Denver failed to reach 100 points. And in Game 7, the Wolves held Denver to 37 second half points, which is a truly historic defensive effort. Carl Anthony Towns was definitely the X factor in the series as he stretched out the Nuggets defense, having to account for his three-point shooting. But it was what he did on defense that saved the Timberwolves season. He put the three-time MVP in a strafe jacket. As Minnesota crafted the perfect defensive scheme against the Joker. The triple tag team of Cat, Gobert, and Nas Reed were sensational against the Joker. And Nas Reed truly gave the Joker problems because of his size and quickness, blocking two shots on one possession earlier in the series. The Timberwolves defense exploited the Nuggets bench and at times weren't even guarding them, as Peyton Watson was supposed to be the substitute for Bruce Brown, but he was played out of the series due to his inability to space the floor, while Christian Brown wasn't much better, just opting to not shoot them at all instead. Minnesota just doubled Nikola Jokic on every possession, using Cat's size and frame to be the primary defender, while sending Edwards or McDaniels to double, forcing turnovers or bad shots. However, even with this kind of pressure, Nikola Jokic would still occasionally make a ridiculous cross-court read like he did here. But unlike the Lakers, the Wolves never panicked and instead dared him to do it again, and it worked. Denver needed consistent help from Porter Jr. and Gordon to free Jokic of the double team, but the help never came, as Michael Porter Jr. in particular was terrible in the 
series, only putting up 11 points a game on 35% shooting from three. But that begs one question to be answered. How does Minnesota match up against the Dallas Mavericks? Out of the four games the Mavericks and the Timberwolves played this season, the Wolves won three out of four. However, all of these games came before Dallas made their trade deadline moves to bring in Gafford and Washington. And one of these losses came when Dallas didn't have Luka or Kyrie, so we can't really take much from the head-to-head. In the playoffs, the Mavericks just beat the one-seeded Thunder in six games, but OKC made them scrap for every game. A major concern moving forward for the Mavericks is the health of Luka Doncic. As the medical team said if it was the regular season, they would sit him for over two weeks. Kyrie also wasn't his usual best, as the Thunder's top three defense was definitely effective when it came to slowing Doncic and Irving down. But where the series was ultimately lost for the Thunder was at the big man position, giving up too many second chance opportunities, allowing PJ Washington to explode for 29 points and 11 rebounds in game two. However, Minnesota do not have the same problems as the Thunder. As between Rudy, Cat, and Reed, the Timberwolves have no issues securing rebounds, along with being an even better defensive team than the Thunder. The Mavericks will still be a tough test though, as a backcourt of Luka and Kyrie could win you a game all by themselves. The Mavericks also have a top five defense of their own, and a great offense to boot, making them, in my eyes, a true title contender. Anthony Edwards will likely be guarded by PJ Washington, who has more size and strength to battle with Ant. Carl Anthony Towns will be the X factor again in this series, as with PJ out guarding Ant, the Mavericks will have to figure out how to contain Cat as well. With PJ and Aaron Gordon playing very similar to each other, the Mavericks will have the same issue as Denver, being too small with their four guarding a shooting guard. Denver attempted to hide Michael Porter Jr. or Justin Holiday on Rudy, but Minnesota eventually began to feed Rudy the ball inside, and it wasn't long before the Nuggets had to come up with something else. An option for Dallas would be to start a jumbo lineup, featuring Gafford, Lively, and Washington, but with neither Gafford or Lively being able to space the floor, that's just not a realistic option. But where the Timberwolves will give the Mavs the most problems is their defense. Minnesota hides its subpar offense with the league's best defense, which virtually powers the offense. With Anthony Edwards guarding Kyrie Irving and Jaden McDaniels on Luka Doncic, they have two favorable matchups. With Edwards being quick on his feet, he can definitely stay in front of Kyrie, while the length of McDaniels will definitely slow Luka down. Lou Dort defended Luka about as well as you possibly can in the second round, keeping Luka to 24 points a game on 44% shooting well below his averages. If McDaniels and Ant can slow Luka and Kyrie down, the Timberwolves will win in six games.